Ford Bronco blown engines? Boy, I better not get a Ford Bronco, or I definitely better avoid that six cylinder, despite it having awesome torque. Well, let's make sense of all of this. So I'm Johnny from Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. And the whole team here, we're here to help. If you wanna help us out, just hit that like and subscribe button. Let's put the pedal to the metal. And let's get talking about these blown engines because they are really concerning people. And that is totally understandable. And that's totally relatable. But let's get right into it. So first of all, let's talk about the world we live in these days. Everything's on the internet. You know, one problem spoken really loudly can seem like a problem, a really big problem. And well, it's been more than just one problem spoken really loudly. There's about 48, 50 documented cases, meaning there's probably about, let's say 100 cases out there of blown engines. Complete catastrophic failure of those engines. So while this may seem like a real reason to not get a Bronco and make you think that you really should rush out and buy a Jeep right away. Let's really talk about numbers. <laughs> I think it's really important to talk about numbers and let's put some perspective on this. Do I really think that everyone should go out and buy a Jeep? No. Do I think some people should go out and buy a Jeep? Yes, absolutely. But it's not because of the blown issue, blown engine issue. So the blown engine issue, let's first recap, talked about it in several videos now for a little while. Blown engine issue is a dropped valve issue. The valve drops or valves and well, they ruin the engine. So let's put it as sim simple as that. Why is it happening? Well, for when they get parts from suppliers, they get them in batches. And while there's a bad batch, and because there's been no recall, obviously Ford would prefer to just switch out some valves than to switch out some whole, whole engines. There's been no recall sent to specific customers, specific owners. So clearly there's no way of knowing exactly of that batch, which one had bad valves. And these valves are bad because a mixture, I guess, of bad materials, bad construction, but then result is they are bad valves. It's affected 50 people. And let's say it's affected in reality, 50 known cases. Let's say the NHTSA is looking into 48 claimed cases now, and they're probably all true. I'm sure there's 48 blown engines and I'm sure there's some out there that they don't know about. Let's say there's a hundred. Well, if there's a hundred based on the number of 2.7 liters that have been built thus far, we're talking about if my math is right, about a tenth of a percentile. Not 1%, a tenth of a percent. So that's not a lot. That's really not a lot. This is a catastrophic failure for those that occurs to. But here's something else you really need to know. This is must know information. Don't be fooled. It's happening almost the, the, the clump, the, the majority of people, really it's around the 25 the 2500 mile mark so 2500 miles that's where it's occurring from what i know from what i saw off of you know bronco 6g it looks like there's two reported cases that are almost at the 10,000 mile mark but it looks like if you've passed the 5,000 mile mark you're pretty much in the clear there have been very few cases over 5,000 miles the, the major clumping is right around the 25,000 mile mark there's some at 1500, there's some at 1000, there's some at three or 4000, but 2000 to 2500 miles is basically where it's gonna happen. And it's happened to a 10th of a percentile. And I hope my math isn't wrong and someone can correct that, but you know, I based it off, give or take um, 50,000. Let's say we had 50,000, 2.7 liters. And if we looked at 2.7 liters from F-150s, well then, <laughs> it'd be ridiculously, ridiculously small. Um, but that's basically just a bad batch of valves. So would I exclude a vehicle because of a bad batch that they received in supplies? No, I would not completely write off a vehicle and rush to get something else. Now, if you do rush off and get a Jeep, here's a reason to do it. They have Jeeps in yards. You're gonna get it quicker. Currently, I'll have to post some photos, uh, but the green Jeep that I'm gonna be posting, 
That's a soft top four cylinder with a hitch and that was ordered middle of January and it just showed up. It's the middle of June. So not that bad. And I've got a two door hard top that showed up and that was ordered with a 2.3 liter, no Sasquatch. And well, that was ordered back in October. So definitely a longer wait for anything that's hard top. And I really think that's the issue because I've had some 2.7 liters, generally 2.7 liter Sasquatches taking about six, seven months as well. As soon as there's a hard top, you know, you're, you're definitely past that six month mark. Where you buy is so unbelievably important because you need to know where you're on, you are on their waiting list. How many people are in front of you and roughly how many people, how many do they get? How many VINs do they get per month? So if they've got a hundred people in front of you, but they only get about two VINs or three VINs per month, that's definitely not a place to buy from. So let's say in the past, if they advertised, uh, you know, a special price of a thousand dollars off, they probably got a ton of people to order. They probably didn't tell people, hey, you know what? We're already at 100. We're only gonna get 100 over two years. You probably you know, know this, and if you wanna order with us, great, but if you wanna go somewhere else, that's okay too. I think that's a good way of doing business. You need to be honest, upfront, and decide on the price signed upfront. That's the right way to do business, and it upsets me when business is done otherwise. You gotta put your cards on the table. We're not playing poker. We're buying an expensive machine here, a toy for some and transportation for others and for me really both and i love my bronco and i love i had two 2.7 liter ecoboosts neither have had engine issues uh, one i sold at uh, about 10,000 miles actually 10,000 miles spot on and i had it for nine months and now the other one i received december 23rd and it's at about about 3,500 miles so i'm almost out of the woods uh, statistically and anyways the chances that it occurs are extremely small but here are reasons that you sh you know if you're not gonna get a Bronco or cancel your Bronco because you've heard of this 2.7 liter and some uh, journalists will make a huge deal out of it like it's catastrophic for all the Broncos it which it really is not got it you have to be aware of also the Jeep problems Jeeps even though they've been in production since you know since we're using horses almost for transportation, the, the tops had you know many years for especially around uh, you know the 2017s, 20 basically 2015 to uh, 2019, 2020, lots of issues with leaking tops. Generally, still a lot of issues with the transmission. Jeep has a lot of problems with transmissions, and it's not one out of you know it's not a hundred out of fifty thousand. They they have problems with their transmissions problems you know the rollaways problems shifting hard shifting complete failure all sorts of problems we you know locally i saw you know the the dealer the local dealer i'm connected to i saw them take on a jeep gladiator and the reason as well uh, the customer had had and actually it was an employee's brother had had issues with uh, a little bit of issue with the transmission it got corrected and well he wanted something different so these things actually do happen i know uh two people that are in my inner circle i'd say and within their inner circle they had transmission problems another issue that can arise is that it's really cool that wranglers also use aluminum panels the bronco has aluminum panels uh, at least on my knock test, I haven't done the, the magnet test, but on the knock test, it has aluminum panels. And the Jeep Wrangler, I can guarantee, has aluminum panels. I've seen them get worked on. And these Wranglers, well, they've got the door hinges. And the door hinges are what? On the outside. And what are they made of? Steel. And is there any coating in between the steel bracket and the aluminum paneling? No. So you're pretty much guaranteed with time that you're going to have you know, a reaction between the steel and the aluminum, it's just science. There's no way to avoid it unless there was insulation and a spacer in between the two, but there isn't. So guess what? You're gonna have a type of corrosion that's gonna occur right there and it's gonna ruin your paint. So one thing to keep in mind, no matter where you go, no matter what model you shop, there's always gonna be a percentage of problems going on. And there's gonna be some people that are gonna be really loud on the internet about it and that's okay. 
just it's important to realize that that's not all of them. Heck, Toyota Camrys at some point for some customers had some pretty big transmission problems. Toyota Camry, Toyota, super reliable. Camry, statistically, ex over the years, unbelievably reliable. Well, there's some years where the transmission just wasn't that great. Right now, I'm not willing to say that the 2.7 liter is not that great because for me to say something's not that great, it means there needs to be a design flaw. Not that there is a bad batch of parts that were received, that the problem, like with the Bronco, the problem has been found, isolated, but not quite enough because it'd be great to know exactly who has these bad valves so that they could be fixed before the engine blows. And there's even, uh, I, heard, I was reading a case of someone whose replacement engine then blew because that replacement 2.7 liter also had bad valves. So that really sucks for them. It's really frustrating. You know, if you were to watch a video of someone describing their experience, it's very emotional and can give you definite emotional reasons to not touch the Bronco. But when you, you know, let's say we look at this from a wider perspective and we try to look at this as logically as possible, every model is gonna be affected. Any model can have a supplier give them a bad batch of something. Really, when you buy something, I'd say try to buy it because you are gonna have an emotional response to it. It's gonna make you happy. You're gonna enjoy driving it. You're gonna enjoy having it in your yard and also buy it for sensible reasons. For example, my dream Bronco doesn't exist. It's a plug-in Bronco because it'd be very sensible to go to work 100% electric, come home 100% electric, spend no money on gas and electricity is relatively cheap for the moment in my area. So I could charge, it'd cost me if I were to drive, you know, 20, let's say 12,000 miles per year in electricity, I'd spend about $300. And for the rare time I do long distance driving or when I really need to hear a little bit of motor, I could hit that pedal and have, you know, the gas engine kick in. So that's my dream vehicle. And a few problems aren't gonna, it's not gonna scare me away from a vehicle. A complete design flaw that does not get corrected. So let's say that just the design of the motor was just generally causing major problems in a high percentage of vehicles. So let's say two, three, four, or 5% of vehicles. Well, if I've got a one in 20 chance of having my engine blow, yeah, I'm not touching that. If I have a 1% chance of an engine blowing, if it's due to a uh, design flaw, yeah, I'm, I'm probably not gonna touch that. But if it's a bad batch and there's a very, very strong chance that I've got perfect valves in my Bronco, I'm still gonna love my Bronco. I'm not gonna sell it. I'm always gonna keep one Bronco in the yard, at least financially. That's the hope. And well, your subscriptions will decide whether that happens because if no one is uh, subscribed and no one is following the channel, well then uh, I won't have the money to have both you know, a Bronco and something electrical so I can not spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on gas per month. But that's a whole different story, gas prices. That is a different subject a different topic and I'm not diving into that tonight. But if you do like the t this type of content, news content mixed with the occasional review, please subscribe and in the comments, let me know what you think. What's your viewpoint on all this? What stories have you heard? And let, you can also let me know in the comments section if you prefer news where I cover the news and I dive in or if you prefer really car reviews because I'm here to you know help whatever way I can I'm Johnny from Johnny's Car Care and Reviews, and I do appreciate your support. I do hope you get more cars and more power. It's, we're not far away from being one year waiting for a Maverick, and hey, we deserve that. We got two Broncos in relatively, you know, these days, fast amount of time. It was about six months in both cases. So, you know, we got really lucky there. So, you know what, we should have to wait for a Maverick, and if other people get their Mavericks before us, we're happy for that. Do hope you are enjoying your Ford product. If you own one and if you own another vehicle, I'd love to hear in the comment section why. Have a great week. Take care.